Austin here at AG Auto Works, back with another Diag video. We've got a 2015 Silverado 1500 with a 6.2 liter in it. We're going to check out this thing. Customer states that uh, he filled it up with fuel, drove it home. Once he put it in reverse to put it in the garage, it started missing. He suspected it was bad fuel. He believed he dropped the tank. Uh, drained all the fuel out of it, put new fuel in it, and it's still missing. He stated on his scanner or his tuner that it showed a misfire on cylinder eight. And uh, we're going to hook it up to a scan tool and see what we can find here. Now, when the truck first came to us, I pulled it in the garage and it had a wet fuel spot underneath the fuel tank. It's dry now but the tank still has a little bit of wetness on it i believe that's just where he was draining the fuel tank or ran all the fuel out of the fuel tank we're gonna put the scan tool on this thing and start it up and see what it does i got the scan tool hooked up and let's read some codes. We got a map sensor code. Engine misfire detected. So I just turned the key on and checked the codes and now I smell fuel. I don't see any fuel leaking on the ground, but I smell fuel very strongly. Hmm. I guess I'll just cycle the key on and off several times, see if I can get it to leak some fuel on the ground. Well, there's no fuel on the ground yet, so I'm going to look through the scan tool and select some PIDs and start it up and watch the PIDs. After a while, I'll recheck under there and see if there's any fuel leaking. So I just restarted it and short term fuel trim on bank 1 went up 13%. Bank 2 is down 3%, which is normal. This is excessive. Watching both of the sensor ones before the cats here the sensor twos after the cats over here It looks like before the cats there's not a lot of activity like there should be This should be going You know closer to zero closer to 1000 back and forth say 200 800 2800 somewhere in there but it's not give it some throttle about 2500 or three grand the engine smooths out it seems to run a lot better short-term fuel trim on bank one comes back down to where it should be these start reading a lot better But it's only doing it on bank one. Bank two isn't raising the fuel trim real high, only bank one. Now when the fuel trim on bank one is way high and you give it throttle and it comes back down, that's a sign of a, of a vacuum leak. These not reading until you give it throttle. That to me is more of a sign of a clogged cat. 
but these are two different banks and there's two different cats there so it can't just be a clogged cat on bank one because bank two sensor one was pretty well flatlined at idle also but the misfire data is not increasing it's staying at the numbers that it's reading cylinder eight being the highest but it's not the only one showing a misfire cylinder six seven five three one they're all showing a misfire count and I try to clear this and it won't it won't clear are you sure you want to clear the data yes same numbers going to try an automated injector balance test See over here it's testing each cylinder one at a time telling you what's testing and what's completed at the same time you can read these numbers and it'll it'll record the fuel pressure drop Completed all the tests. Now from doing that test, there's one that really stands out to me, injector six. You can see every one of them stay pretty close to 30. Pressure drop on cylinder two, 29. Cylinder one, 37. Cylinder three, 31. Five is 26. 28 30 cylinder 6 is 14 it only dropped PSI 14 on cylinder 6 it doesn't make sense to me that one bank is adding fuel trim and another bank is taking away fuel trim if it could be a vacuum leak so I'm going to clear the codes and I'm going to reset the fuel trim data and run it and see what happens. Because if it adds fuel to both banks, then I would suspect a vacuum leak. Just doing it to one, I'm not so sure. So I'm going to do that and see what I can get to happen. Resetting the fuel trim. Now, you want to know what the fuel trim looks like? Data, fuel trim, data. We'll go short term fuel trim bank one, long term, short term fuel trim bank two, long term, and pull up the sensors bank one, sensor one, bank two, sensor one. Bank one sensor two, bank two sensor two,
Well, I ran it for a while and the smell of fuel got really bad and I looked under the truck. We got a fuel link back at the tank. So I'm guessing that that's not the cause of the problem we're having because he had that problem before he dropped the tank and drained all the fuel out. I'm guessing that something happened while he was doing that and it hasn't sealed up. So we got another issue to fix. After resetting the fuel trim, I seen that the fuel trim was getting adjusted, adding fuel in both banks. So that makes me believe it could be because of vacuum. So I tested that theory with water on the intake. I didn't find any vacuum leaks, sprayed it everywhere, didn't find anything. So I moved on to doing a relative compression check. The relative compression check will tell me the state of the engine. If it's not producing vacuum, it could be two things if it doesn't have vacuum. It could be a vacuum leak, or it could be that the motor itself doesn't produce the vacuum. Now, the reason I have the firing order pulled up is because since I have the trigger set for cylinder one, and I'm checking the compression, I'll be able to read off of the wavelengths to tell what cylinder is what, just knowing by what cylinder number one is. So looking at this wavelength where the green spikes up is cylinder one. Looks like the wavelength right after cylinder one is the tallest that or cylinder one is the lowest definitely the longest downhill on the on the wavelength there after cylinder one so there's definitely a pattern there but it's nothing that like strikes me super huge to think that there is an issue with compression So we know the misfire counter had a higher count on cylinder 8 and now we see something with the relative compression check showing a issue at cylinder 1 going into cylinder 8. So there's two things that strike on cylinder 8 right there. So I'm going to look at the codes and look up the codes for TSBs and see what symptoms what TSBs fit our symptoms. So I already did that. And I scrolled through here. We got something about. Uh, oops. About uh, carbon buildup on, on valves. I don't know. that. I mean it could be an issue. But we got. I believe it was this one. Nope. Fat fingered it. This one. So this TSB here states vehicle may come in for a P0106. That's the map sensor code we got. This may be caused by a broken valve spring. So we could have a broken valve spring. says uh, remove the valve or the valve cover inspect for a broken valve spring oh crap looking back at this relative compression check scrolling through the wavelength there's one thing that's definitely obvious and it's after cylinder one fires there's a deep dive in the waveform there it is again 
right here. There's a deep dive in the waveform. All the other cylinders have equal compression. And if you count the wavelength, there's only seven. So we got one cylinder missing. Like I showed you earlier, there's the firing order. After one, there's cylinder eight. So we're missing compression on cylinder eight. To find out why cylinder eight does not have compression, first I ran a scope up in the spark plug hole and tried to view the valves. I've turned it over, looked at the valves. I don't see anything that looks bad, but I can only see two of the valves. I tried turning my scope around every which way I could. I can only see two of the valves. So that wasn't even worth showing you. It wasn't even worth me doing because there's still two other valves in there that could be messed up. So I went to a cylinder leak down test. I already have it hooked up. I took out number eight spark plug, hooked the hose up. You can see I got 60 pounds, but it's only holding 10. It's leaking somewhere. So I got the cylinder pressurized. Now I gotta see where it's going. It can be going into the crankcase. Well, before I continue, after I tried viewing it with the scope, I used the scope to turn the engine over to make sure I have it on top dead center and the valves are closed. I verified that. Now I've pressurized it and now I gotta see where it's going. So it can be going into the crankcase, the dipstick or the oil fill, you, you hear the air coming out. Or it could be going into the intake, which I already have the EVAP uh, solenoid off. So I can hear right there if it's coming into the intake or it could be coming out of the exhaust. So let's check them. So I took the filler cap off. I don't hear anything, don't feel anything. I got the EVAP purge off. There's a hole down here. I don't hear anything or feel anything. Now I've already felt the exhaust and I couldn't feel anything, so I did a little trick. I put a glove on it. So, gloves flat. Pull this over the bottom. Now there's the glove up. Pretty neat. So that's what it is. Got an exhaust valve problem. And I just got to report it to the customer that there's an issue with the exhaust valve leaking.